What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? January 2nd, 2025. A warning has been issued for an underwater volcano off the United States' west coast, and it is primed to erupt in 2025. The volcano, called Axial Seamount, is more than 3,600 feet tall and sits a half mile underwater, just 300 miles off the coast of Oregon. Scientists made this prediction on December 10th, 2024, after detecting seafloor swelling around Axial that mimicked a level seen immediately before an eruption in 2015. Seismic activity has also increased with hundreds of earthquakes generated around the volcano per day and earthquake swarms greater than 500 a day. Researchers have stated the current eruption forecast window is between now and the end of 2025. Located on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, Axial is the most active underwater volcano in the Northeast Pacific. The Juan de Fuca Plate is subducting beneath the North American Plate known as the Cascadia Subduction Zone. This is a major fault line running 700 miles along the Pacific Northwest Coast, stretching from northern Vancouver Island to northern California, where the potential for large powerful earthquakes exist due to the movement of these tectonic plates. The Juan de Fuca plate is slowly moving eastward and is diving underneath the larger North American plate. This subduction zone is capable of producing massive megathrust earthquakes with magnitudes exceeding 9.0. Megathrust earthquakes are the most powerful earthquakes on the planet and can cause tsunamis that are more destructive than the earthquake itself. These earthquakes occur when one tectonic plate is forced beneath another at convergent plate boundaries. The slip along the thrust fault that forms the contact between the two plate causes the earthquake. The thrusting motion of the megathrust earthquake causes a large vertical movement on the sea floor which displaces large volume of water. This water travels away from the undersea motion as a tsunami. Megathrust tsunamis can be very destructive and can cross ocean basins to devastate areas far from the original earthquake. The 1700 Cascadia Megathrust earthquake generated a tsunami that wiped out low-lying settlements on the coast of Vancouver Island, Canada. According to the crew scenario, the number of deaths could exceed 10,000 with more than 30,000 injured and economic losses could surpass $70 billion for Washington, Oregon, and California. Now we know the world has plenty of natural cycles and cyclical disasters. We have seen the world's governments and militaries and all of their scientists harness the power of nature and turn it into a geophysical weapon. So can geoengineering trigger an earthquake? The answer is a not so surprising yes. There are many ways geoengineering can trigger earthquakes, directly and indirectly. Stratospheric aerosol injection, large scale operations could potentially alter the atmospheric pressure pattern, which may indirectly influence stress on the faults and certain regions. Projects like carbon capture, enhanced geothermal energy projects, fracking, and other geoengineering methods that involve large-scale fluid injection, groundwater extraction, and mass manipulation of Earth's crust can potentially increase the risk of earthquakes by altering stress levels along existing faults, potentially triggering seismic activity in areas that might not otherwise experience earthquakes. These events are often referred to as induced seismicity or geomechanical pollution. We have also seen the United States military create earthquakes off the Virginia and Florida coast. We have seen laser-induced volcanic eruptions. We have also seen world leaders protest the use of HARP facilities saying it has been used as a weapon of mass destruction. But HARP is not the only facility of its kind. We have Arecibo, IceGat, the South Pole Station, the Ice Cube, Super Darn, and many more ionospheric heaters around the world. Nikola Tesla is said to have built an earthquake generating machine. There is also scalar technology which I covered in my video, Virtual Antenna. If you haven't seen it, go check it out on my YouTube channel. There is always more to the story than meets the eye. Climate science is their cover story. But we know weather warfare is the real story. This is The Great Reset. All right, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Rebecca Grenier, 
Donna Creamer and Abby. Thank you for helping to support this channel and keep it up and running. I really couldn't do it without you. Much love and many thanks. Okay, Skywatchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.